Smartphones nowadays are bigger than ever. Like literally, this iPhone 14 Pro Max is huge. It's almost the size of my face. And when using this on a daily basis or putting it in my pocket, it can be a nuisance. It's really huge and clunky. And sometimes I wish I got the standard Pro model and not the Max. But even the Pro model is still a pretty big phone. And a lot of Android phones are big as well. So there's not a lot of options out there. Today we're going to be taking a look at this phone right here, which is called the Jelly 2E. This is a really small budget Android smartphone, and it can actually be a great second phone, or I guess if you do have a minimalist lifestyle, then you might be able to use this as your primary device. In terms of the screen size on this guy, it's a three inch display. So this thing is actually smaller than the iPhone 4 or the iPhone 3GS or even the first iPhone this thing is even smaller than that. So it really is pocketable, really tiny in your hand. You can obviously reach all corners of the screen with your thumb, which is really nice because a lot of phones nowadays, you kind of have to do the shuffle in order to use your device one-handed. So in terms of the OS that's running on this phone, it's actually got Android 12. So it's not the newest thing in the world, but it is pretty up to date. It supports all your new apps as well as all the sort of new features. There's not much difference between Android 13 and Android 12. So honestly, from my experience, it's actually been pretty good. It feels pretty up to date, doesn't really feel old. And you have all the new widgets as well as all the new Material U features with the colored tiles up at the top here. And uh, yeah, just feels like any other Material U Android 12 device. But obviously, it's just a lot smaller. And you really can't see that when you're actually using this phone because the home screen is literally tiny. Like you really only get a three by three grid for your home screen. So in terms of the display resolution, you've got a 480 by 854 panel. That might sound pretty low, but considering how small this screen is, it's actually not bad. I mean, when you're looking at the display, even off axis from all the different positions and angles, it's got very good viewing angles. It's an IPS display. It's decently bright, doesn't get overly bright when you're outside and there is kind of a lot of glare because the, the front panel is very shiny, has kind of rounded glass on the edges there. And obviously it doesn't go edge to edge. So you still kind of have this home button chin down here as well as the forehead. So yeah, it's not the most sleek modern looking phone and obviously it is pretty chunky as well. So in terms of the performance on this phone, it does have four gigabytes of RAM as well as a quad core processor but I just find it a little bit janky at times, especially when you're pulling down that notification bar, when you're opening applications, even like the Play Store, it can take two, three, or even four seconds sometimes to actually fully load and open up the app. And that kind of experience is frustrating to me, especially when you're just waiting for things to load all the time. It really takes away from the experience. So in terms of the actual build quality of this phone, it is pretty much all plastic on the back here. So you have this kind of rounded plastic cover and it's non-removable, which kind of sucks. It would be nice if you could swap out the battery, but um, it does have a 2000 milliamp hour battery packed into here. That's pretty much why it's so thick. And that does give you about four or five hours screen on time. It takes a couple hours to charge up, which isn't too bad. And something really nice is you have a USB-C port. However, they, they stuck it on the side. So when you're charging, you can't plug it in like a normal smartphone, you have to kind of plug it in at the side here, which is just a little bit odd to get used to. But on the right side, you have your lock button, as well as this orange kind of red accented custom button. And you can actually program that to do basically anything you want. So you can make it so that when you click that button, it turns on your flashlight. If you double click it, it opens up your camera app. You can basically do things like that. You can just program it to be an extra button, which is uh, pretty useful, honestly, kind of like that. Wish more devices would have that. And then on the left side, you have this volume rocker, but it honestly just looks like a power button. Like I'm so used to power buttons being that size that is, it just looks like a very undersized uh, volume rocker, honestly, but it does the job. I mean, it works. And um, up top here, you also have a headphone jack. So if you're a little bit old school, you wanna to listen to some music with some cable headphones, you can plug those in. Something else which is so old school and really cool is there's an IR blaster up there. Remember the days of IR blasters when, when people would just go around with their Samsung phones and like troll people, turn off and on TVs in stores and turn off and on projectors. Oh, that was the day. I remember fooling around uh, doing that quite a bit. So uh, yeah, nostalgic, but really cool. So you can actually use this phone to control all your IR receiver devices. That could be like your Blu-ray players, your TV, 
your media players, anything that uses IR, even your like your aircon in your room, you can control it from this phone. On the back of the phone, you have a fingerprint scanner here. The fingerprint scanner is okay. It's not the fastest thing in the world and it's definitely not the most accurate. Honestly, it kind of unlocks like six out of 10 times. So for every 10 times I try, I would say six times it does actually go ahead and work. Um, but if you don't want to use the fingerprint scanner, there is also face unlock. So you have a front facing camera, which is it's definitely okay. It is eight megapixel and it's not something I would personally be be taking selfies on or taking videos on because I mean, yeah, it definitely doesn't look too good. It's quite flat. The colors aren't very vibrant, but it does the job. I mean, it has a front camera. So if you do want to do some video calls and you're not really concerned about the quality, then uh, it's a usable front camera, definitely. And then on the back here, we have a 16 megapixel camera and below that a two tone flash. So the camera on the back is definitely OK. It's definitely a little bit more usable than the front camera. You do have a pretty basic camera application, but it has pro mode as well as video mode, time lapse mode. And if you're curious about the storage, there's actually a little micro SD card slot on the side, which doubles as a dual SIM card slot. So if you only have one SIM card, you want to make use of the other slot, then you can throw in a micro SD and you can expand your storage. But in terms of just the standard built in storage, you have 64 gigabytes. And I can say it's probably not up to standard for 2022. But considering it's such a small phone, you're not really going to be downloading games or anything really hardcore. So 64 is kind of just fine. A really massive drawback that I personally find frustrating is the fact that there is no NFC on this phone as well as no wireless charging. So that means if you want to go in a store and pay for something using your Google Pay, then there's no way of doing that on this phone because there's no NFC. In terms of your experience when watching content like on YouTube or Netflix, Obviously, it's a very tiny phone. I mean, you're going to struggle to actually see what's going on if you're watching a movie or any sort of content. But that being said, you can go ahead and watch YouTube videos. I watched a couple videos on this phone myself, and it definitely is possible to sit and watch a video. You kind of actually forget how big it is, honestly, but you end up always holding it very close to your face. That's something I've definitely noticed. Something else I noticed was the speakers are really loud in this. So there's only one speaker, which is at the bottom. The earpiece speaker doesn't act as like a, a stereo speaker, so you're only getting one down firing speaker, but that speaker is actually very loud. I was surprised when playing music and just watching videos. It's very loud and also very clear, but it is a little bit on the tinny side. There's there's not a huge amount of bass. So most of the things about this phone are just kind of subpar. I would say the best thing about it actually is probably the display. I think the display is definitely very nice to look at, like I mentioned earlier. But yeah, this is definitely not something I would recommend for a daily driver. So if you want to go ahead and ditch your smartphone and go for something small like this, I would say your life is going to get frustrating. Now, that may be what you want. You may want a less pleasant experience. So you end up using your phone less and you sort of engage yourself in the in the real world a little bit more. But in my experience, I would suggest you go for something just a little bit bigger and a little bit more practical in this phone. This phone's definitely, in my mind, more of a second device you would use. So yeah, you could easily throw your SIM card in this and kind of use it as a second device when you don't want to bring your, your big phone with you like my iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's just a little bit huge in your pocket. If you're going to the gym or if you're going on a hike or on some day trip, then yeah, this is, this is definitely usable to throw your SIM card in, bring with you. You can pretty much do all the standard stuff you would do on your main phone, um, but it just takes up a little bit less space and it's just a little bit more portable. But other than that, I would say, yeah, there's really not much benefit over just buying a bigger phone because this phone actually prices in at $169. So it's definitely not as cheap as I think it should be. I think it should be about $100, honestly, for what you're getting but you can get it on sale at cheaper prices. I've seen it for about 159. Um, but personally, I still think Google Pixel like 6a, it's not too much more. You can kind of pick it up for like 250 if you're getting it on a sale day. Uh, maybe after Christmas, they might have sales. So yeah, it's up to you guys whether you can find it cheaper, how much it is in your region. Personally to me though, it's, it's definitely not a daily driver. Let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. But, uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say about it. So I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. I really, really appreciate it, actually, because uh, not a lot of people stick around this long. So if you've made it this far, definitely comment down below. Let me know as well as hit that bell icon, because I mean, 
you're obviously enjoying my content, so you might as well hit subscribe. So yeah, I will see you guys later. Peace.